Good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan Guest, Elections Data Fellow here at Decision Desk HQ, and I'm going to be here throughout the entire night taking you through each major poll closing, which races to watch, as well as which metrics our race call team will be factoring in to our projections as the night goes on. So without further ado, starting with the first poll closing of the night at 7 p.m. on the East Coast, polling stations will close statewide in Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, Vermont, and Virginia, as well as the large majority of counties located in the Eastern time zone in Florida. Now here are the races to watch. Starting in Florida, incumbent Governor Ron DeSantis is perhaps the most high-profile candidate on the ballot in these midterms. He faces former governor and U.S. congressman, Democratic nominee Charlie Crist. DeSantis was first elected in 2018 by a margin of less than half a percent, but is expected to win re-election by a much larger margin, as he leads by over 8% in both 538 and Real Clear Politics's polling averages. Our friends over at Inside Elections rate the contest as likely Republican. This race could be an early bellwether for what comes later in the night. If we haven't called it as polls close statewide at 8 p.m. Eastern, then Republicans may not be looking at major gains elsewhere, while Democrats' hopes of perhaps maintaining control of either chamber would increase. The same theory applies to Florida's U.S. Senate race between incumbent Senator Marco Rubio and Democratic nominee Val Demings. Demings has proven herself a formidable fundraiser and polled surprisingly well at times throughout this cycle, but Rubio won by close to 8% in 2016 and EDHQ gives him a better than 85% chance of winning re-election to a third term. Make sure to keep an eye on the early returns out of Miami-Dade County. Rubio ran 20 points ahead of Trump there in 2016, and remember that the county shifted from Clinton plus 30 to Biden plus 7, in large part due to significant shifts among the county's majority Hispanic population. Needless to say, Demings will need to be much closer to Clinton's margins than Biden's to have a realistic chance statewide, and that's a tall order given Rubio's strength in the area. Moving on to Georgia, Republican Governor Brian Kemp faces a rematch of the 2018 election with Stacey Abrams, which Kemp won by 1.4%. The race is expected to be less competitive this time around, as Kemp, fresh off an impressive primary win against Trump-endorsed David Perdue, has consistently pulled about 5-6 to six points ahead of Abrams on average. Notably, he has also polled well ahead of Republican Senate candidate Herschel Walker in his race against incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock. One indication of how this Senate race may turn out is the difference between support for Kemp and Walker, especially in Cobb and Gwinnett counties, as well as the other well-educated Atlanta Collar counties where Warnock performed exceptionally well two years ago. In 2020, Democrats were extremely strong in the suburbs, but a key thing to focus on this decade is whether that strength extends to the less diverse, high-income, high-education, exurban communities like Forsyth and Cherokee County. Also keep in mind that there is real potential that neither of these candidates reaches 50%, and once again we'll be back in Georgia this time in December for a runoff race that could potentially decide control of the U.S. Senate once again. Finally, there aren't too many competitive House races to watch at this hour, but keep an eye on Florida's 13th Congressional District. This seat is being vacated by Charlie Crist, who's running for governor, and was heavily gerrymandered to favor Republicans, likely making it one of the easiest flips of the night for the GOP. In Virginia's second, Democratic Congresswoman Elaine Luria is running for a third term in a district that became several points more Republican via redistricting. Now Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin carried the district by 11% last year, despite Biden winning by 2% in 2020. So needless to say, Luria will need to win back some of those Biden-Youngkin voters, especially in Virginia Beach City, where DDHQ forecasts she must win by at least 4% to hold off Republican Jen Kiggins. Now this could be one of the first battleground house races that we call tonight, and if Republicans aren't flipping a Biden plus two district, then gains of 30 to 40 seats become much less likely. Now let's go back to Nathan Gonzalez and the team in the studio.